Hey guys, David Tao with barbed.com. And I'm here just to bring you a light. Sorry, what's that? CrossFit sold? Okay, CrossFit as of July 2020, that's next month, has a new owner and a new CEO. What does that mean for the company, for the CrossFit Games, for the athletes, for CrossFit affiliates? We'll try and break all that down as best we can. Please note this is still a breaking news story, so there are a lot of updates still coming down the pipeline. And even before all that, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get all the notifications for breaking news in CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting, strongman, all the strength sports. We cover them here on Bar Bend. All right, unless you've been living under the world's biggest rock for a couple weeks, the CrossFit world has been absolutely rocked. A few weeks ago, Greg Glassman resigned after a series of controversies, including his now infamous Floyd 19 tweet. CrossFit Games director Dave Castro stepped in as acting CEO, and there was just a ton of controversy. Greg Glassman was no longer CEO, but he still owned 100% of the company. Would he still be pulling the strings? athletes were pulling out of the CrossFit Games, not to mention that the fact that the CrossFit Games was already delayed again until at earliest August 17th due to COVID travel restrictions. Things seemed kind of like a mess. There were allegations of rampant sexism at CrossFit HQ, other insensitive comments kind of came to the forefront. And a lot of top athletes and influencers in the space were basically saying, look, unless big things happen at CrossFit HQ, and unless there's a change in ownership, we don't really want any part of this. It's also worth noting over 1,000 CrossFit affiliates announced their intention to disaffiliate from CrossFit HQ. Now, some of them said they'd be reaffiliating or they would not be disaffiliating in the first place after Glassman stepped down as CEO. But a lot of gyms are basically like, look, Glassman still owns the company. There are still issues at HQ. We don't want any part of this with the current ownership and governance structure. There'd been a lot of talk about who would purchase CrossFit HQ from Glassman and would he sell it in the first place? His ex-wife, Lauren Janai, actually told the New York Times that she had made an inquiry about purchasing the company from her ex-husband. Multi-time CrossFit Games athlete Margot Alvarez posted a pretty in-depth and lengthy blog post about some initial conversations she had had about purchasing the company that didn't really seem to ultimately go anywhere. But as of June 24th, it was officially announced by CrossFit that there would be a new owner and CEO come next month. The deal is expected to close in July 2020. And that owner is former DataLogic CEO and 10-year CrossFit affiliate owner, Eric Rosa. All right, Eric Rosa is kind of a big mover and shaker in the tech world. Actually, that's an understatement. He is a big mover and shaker in the tech world. What am I saying? He's the former CEO of DataLogics, which actually sold to Oracle in 2015. Yeah, Oracle, Larry Ellison's company, one of the biggest tech conglomerates in the world, like one of the most powerful companies in the world. Well, Eric Rosa was CEO when DataLogic sold to Oracle, again, back in 2015. DataLogic wasn't Eric Rose's only entrepreneurial endeavor. He's on the board of or an advisor to what it looks like to be multiple startup companies based on his LinkedIn profile and publicly available information. Rosa is also the co-owner and co-founder of CrossFit Sanitas in Boulder, Colorado, which is widely recognized as a top performing CrossFit gym, and he's been involved there for nearly a decade. Rosa was also the chairman of True Coach, which was a software as a service platform for personal trainers that sold earlier in 2020. He's an adjunct professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and he teaches courses on entrepreneurial leadership. He's a nonprofit board member, and he's a board member of Spark Grills, which makes grills. Now, it's one thing to say Eric Rose is a great businessman, but what about his CrossFit and fitness bona fides? Fortunately for us, He's got a lot of really good data. He is a data guy. He did sell a data analytics company to Oracle on his CrossFit athlete page. So let's see here. Eric Rosa, 52 years old, 162 pounds. He's got a 345 pound back squat, a 240 pound clean and jerk, 190 pound snatch, a 395 pound deadlift. His fran time is two minutes and 40 seconds. Not bad for anyone, especially for a guy in his 50s. He can sprint 400 meters in a minute and eight seconds, and his 5K is 1955. Not bad, Eric. Not bad at all. Oh, and 64 max pull-ups. This guy's got some really good body weight skills. Look, if you'd asked me last week who I thought CrossFit might eventually sell to, his name wouldn't have been on my short list. But that doesn't mean that this is an incredibly surprising move. So by all accounts, Rose is someone who has business expertise 
and a lot of love for the game. But what does that mean for the CrossFit Games and affiliate owners? Is he going to keep HQ in California, or is he going to move it to Colorado, where he seems to be largely based? A lot of this is speculative, but Rosa did put out a letter to the CrossFit community, which I'll read for you now. Since I discovered CrossFit 10 years ago, it has changed my life, and I am deeply honored to have the opportunity to lead CrossFit through its next chapter as CEO and owner, following the closing next month. As a box owner and athlete, I've experienced CrossFit's transformative power and the shared bond it creates between people of different races, genders, ages, ethnicities, incomes, educations, and physical abilities. That magic, created by our affiliate owners, coaches, and athletes in 158 countries around the world, is real. And I believe it makes the world a better place. In the past weeks, divisive statements and allegations have left many members of our community struggling to reconcile our transformative experiences in the local box with what we've been reading online. My view is simple. Racism and sexism are abhorrent and will not be tolerated in CrossFit. We open our arms to everyone, and I will be working hard to rebuild bridges with those whose trust we have lost. I come to you with deep humility and the realization that we have hard work to do. I am committed to listening, I am committed to learning, and I am committed to leading positive change. Most of all, I am committed to CrossFit and to you as a member of our community. If you are committed to the future of CrossFit and have ideas, I want to hear from you. And if you love CrossFit and we lost you along the way, I want to regain your trust and partnership. Please reach out to me at eric at crossfit.com. Sign Eric Rosa, hashtag committed to CrossFit. So there you go. If you're looking to get in touch with the new owner and CEO of CrossFit, just email eric at crossfit.com. I'm a little surprised he put that out there. His inbox is going to be flooded, but hey, that's his issue. Acting CEO of CrossFit, Dave Castro, who took over after Greg Glassman retired, also had something to say about Eric Rosa on Twitter, and it was very positive. Very excited to welcome and partner with Rosa Eric, that's his Twitter handle, in his future role as owner and CEO of CrossFit. Eric has CrossFit to the core, and he will help us take CrossFit to the next level, hashtag CrossFit. So when I say Castro is acting CEO, I mean, he's acting CEO. It's clear that Rosa, as the new owner, will be taking over as CEO. What does that mean for Castro? My guess is he'll stay as director of the CrossFit Games and potentially as director of training as well. He shared that role with Nicole Carroll prior to her resignation from CrossFit HQ. No word yet on if she's coming back. So we'll see if Castro's role evolves or if he'll go back to running CrossFit's training programs as well as the CrossFit Games. Although Castro has mentioned that 2020 will likely be the last year where he is the sole programmer for CrossFit Games events. He mentioned Rich Froning as someone who might take over that responsibility. Froning seemed a little surprised by that public announcement. We'll see what happens. So I went to Greg Glassman's Twitter account to see if he had published any reaction to this announcement and his Twitter account was deleted. But CrossFit's Twitter account did publish the following from Greg Glassman, the outgoing owner and former CEO and founder of CrossFit. I started a company with some essential and elegant truths that nobody could or maybe would tell. It resulted in the fastest growing chain in world history. It did so well and became so popular that it has become a thing far larger than I could have hoped. The world has changed, but the magnificent human machine, the proven benefits of CrossFit and its market opportunity remain unchanged. It is time for the founder to bid adieu and find other creative outlets. I have complete faith that Eric Rosa, owner of CrossFit Sanitas, can shepherd CrossFit Inc. effectively into this new world. Signed, Greg Glassman, CrossFit founder. So those are the initial reactions from CrossFit's outgoing leadership. And again, this deal won't close until, they say, July 2020, so next month. We also don't know details on the purchase price and the deal itself. Will Rosa be taking over as sole owner? It seems likely and implied, but we're not sure if he's using his personal money, if he's found different financial backers. We don't really know those details. It'll be interesting to see what comes out, what is publicly released, what leaks over the coming weeks and months. As far as what this means for the CrossFit Games, we don't really know right now. However, it's worth noting the CrossFit Games are delayed until at least August 17th. It's also worth noting more than a dozen top CrossFit Games athletes that said they were out of this year's CrossFit Games. I don't know if that changes due to these major announcements coming out of CrossFit HQ. Is a change in ownership enough to bring those athletes back to this year's competition? My guess is maybe a few, but I think some who have said that they're out for this year are out for this year until they see what the new ownership actually 
does, what changes the new ownership actually makes in CrossFit HQ with CrossFit's relationship with both games athletes and affiliates around the world. We may see some of these athletes come back to the fold for this year's CrossFit Games, but I think others are probably gonna sit this one out, sit the rest of the season out until they see what sorts of changes actually occur within CrossFit HQ. And that's really up to new owner, Eric Rosa. It'll also be interesting to see which efforts that were already going on within CrossFit HQ to support diversity and inclusion and communication are kept under Rosa's leadership. Last week, Dave Castro announced that there would be a new system of CrossFit affiliate representatives to support United States affiliates in the CrossFit community. There was also going to be a cultural inclusion review from a third party conducted at CrossFit HQ after a lot of those uh, allegations from what Glassman said and allegations on the company culture within CrossFit HQ kind of came to light over the previous few weeks. So will those continue? Will those efforts continue? My guess is Rose is not going to come in and stop any efforts that have been routinely praised as promoting diversity, inclusion, and a safer workspace at CrossFit HQ. I think the big question is going to be, what additional measures will he put in place? So there you have it. CrossFit HQ will have a new owner come July 2020, assuming the deal goes through as planned. Greg Glassman will be stepping down, and he will truly be retiring from CrossFit and selling the company, no longer at the helm. What will new CEO and owner Eric Rosa do with the company? How will this exactly impact this year's CrossFit Games and beyond? And more importantly, the CrossFit community globally and CrossFit affiliates? I'm sure there will be a lot more news to report over the coming weeks and months, but those are just some of my thoughts on the immediate impact and what this could mean for the CrossFit space over the rest of the summer. For Barbend.com, I'm David Thomas Tao. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.